I'm Jeremy Faludi, and this is Priorities for Sustainable Design. The goal of this presentation is to give you a sense of perspective when thinking about sustainability issues. There's an infinite number of ways that you can make the world a better place, but where do you get the most bang for your buck? Should you care about paper versus plastic, or how you get to the store? The point is not to just give you the list of priorities, but to also derive the list from empirical evidence so that you can make your own decisions. As a result, we're only going to talk about things with established quantitative measurements, not social issues, just environmental issues. The charts and graphs will often go by too fast to read, but you can download the PDFs of the slides afterwards. So, if you could design anything, where would you do the most good? This says design, but is equally true for someone making a business plan, innovative technology, or changing their lifestyle for sustainability. And an important note here, this assumes that you're starting from scratch. If you're not for starting from scratch, that is, if you already work for or own some company and that company already makes some specific product or other, then the best way to determine your priorities is actually through life cycle assessment, which we're not talking about here. This is clean slate, big picture stuff. So environmentally speaking, the biggest problems are climate change, species extinction and habitat loss, resource depletion, pollution, and overpopulation. We'll look at your priorities for each one of these individually and then combine them all at the end for overall top priorities. First, climate change. This is a chart from World Resources Institute on the major greenhouse gas sources in the US. This will be too small for you to read, but you can find a high-res version on their website. Key takeaways are that at the top, transportation is about 27%. The vast majority of that is cars and trucking. Next down are residential and commercial buildings, also causing about 27% of U.S. CO2 emissions. The AIA says that if you consider the percent of industry energy used for industrial buildings, then buildings make up about 48%. Next biggest things are chemicals and other industries, like paper, cement, and steel, are a couple percent each. At the bottom, there's agriculture. Methane from livestock is a real concern, but soils out gas more due to tilling. This is the same chart for world greenhouse emissions. Here, the biggest thing is deforestation, mostly due to agriculture encroaching on forests. Agriculture is also a bigger slice of the pie here. So, for a designer in the U.S., the top priorities for solving climate change are these. I put buildings and transportation above electricity generation because not using electricity is both greener and more cost-effective with today's technology than generating clean electricity. But if you're doing anything on this list, you're doing great. Those outside the U.S., or taking a more global view, might decide to move agriculture up the list further. In fact, I'm going to add something to the top of the list. I say that cities are number one because good urban design improves both buildings and transportation at the same time. A study by NRDC showed that density can lower energy use two times more than Energy Star building design can. It also lets people replace driving with walking, biking, or transit. Here are some examples of good design for greenhouse reduction. Dense cities don't have to mean skyscrapers, just four to six story row house buildings are great. Calera concrete sequesters carbon in manufacturing rather than giving it off. Gasification and biochar is potentially a carbon negative energy source, and everybody loves electric cars. Even better than electric cars is telecommuting. And you don't have to be an urban planner or architect to make greener cities and buildings. You can make better design and evaluation tools. Walkscore.com is a tool for measuring walkability of neighborhoods. And there are many software tools to help predict building energy use. And new digital interfaces might help eliminate paper. All of these can reduce emissions and make people money.